Salutation Swifters, it's that power hour where you're going to apply what you learned gathering an array of daily weather data to conquer the challenge of now gathering hourly weather data. And as usual, this will be issued as a challenge, but we will offer some hints up front and we'll cover a solution at the end. The clock has struck for big learning. Here's a quick look at what we're going to be doing in this video. You can see we previously learned to print out the information for our daily forecast. Well, now you're going to add the hourly forecast as well. And you're going to print out the forecast for each hour as hour in this format, 12 hour time plus AM or PM, temperature, and the icon code. And that'll set us up so that we can add this in a horizontally scrolling collection view in the next video. So here's your challenge. We've already seen that our API gave us JSON data with daily weather forecast information. And we've learned how to access that. Well, this API also provides hourly weather forecast information. Your task is to create data structures that decode the hourly data into a usable form. Then print the hourly weather to the console, just like you did for the daily weather data. Now over here on the right hand side, you'll see hourly as an array in our JSON, just like we had with daily. The values you want inside of hourly are DT, which is the date time value in Unix format for that particular forecast, temp, which is the temperature with the decimal place, and icon code nested inside of weather. Now to compare this with what we've done previously, daily is an array, you've already worked with it. Well, hourly is an array at the same level. And you'll also see that if you take a look at the JSON output in a web browser. Current, hourly, and daily are all indented the same amount. Now here we see both daily and hourly have DT representing the time and the date at the same level. DT for daily represents the day of the forecast. DT for hourly represents the hour of the forecast. Both have an icon code nested inside of this weather nested JSON so you can reuse the struct you used to access icon previously. But one thing to note, for daily we got a min and max temperature which were both nested inside of a key named temp. Well for hourly, the value for temp isn't nested JSON, it's just a number that can show a decimal Point. Now you've got some more hints on this slide, so feel free to read it carefully if you need to. Some other things to note up front. In the way that you created a daily weather struct outside of the weather detail class, do the same with a new hourly weather struct. Then inside the weather detail class, create a variable called hourly weather data that's an array of the hourly weather struct, just like you did when you created daily weather data that was an array of your daily weather struct. So again, what you've done with daily weather is a really good guide for working with hourly weather. Now since you'll be showing output as just hour plus AM and PM, you're gonna need another date formatter that's got a different date format string. So create the new date formatter up top. Why don't you call it hour formatter? The date format string should be just a lowercase h and a. Ha! That's all you need to show the hour and 12 hour format plus AM or PM after it, given any valid Apple date. So you know what to do next. Pause. Give it your best shot. And let's show a solution. Well, let's head over to weatherdetail.swift, and in the way that we already have a private struct for daily, let's create one for hourly. So we'll say private struct upper camel case hourly colon codable, because we're using this to decode JSON, open and close curlies. First property of this struct is var dt colon time interval, that's a type, upper camel case, then var temp colon double, remember this differs from what we had above, the temp property in daily accessed a temp struct, here our temp is just a double, and then down below we'll say var weather colon, and that's that weird weather struct where we only access the first element, element zero, so we'll say bracket weather with a capital W, close bracket. So now that we've created this struct, we need to add an array of this struct as a property inside of our result struct. So up top here in the result struct, just underneath where we've created our daily property, we'll say var hourly lower camel case colon and then brackets hourly, which refers to our struct. Now that's pretty much all we need to do in order to decode the JSON and grab this hourly data. But now let's create a data structure to hold the data that we're decoding. And we'll do that outside of this class because we're also going to reuse this when we show our data in a horizontally scrollable list. So in the same way we created a struct daily weather up here, let's create an hourly weather one. Note this is above the class name. So we'll say struct hourly weather, open and close curlies. And the struct has three properties, var, hour colon string, var, hourly temperature colon int, and var, hourly icon colon string. Now that we've created this struct, we need to create a property which is an array of this type in our weather detail class. So we'll scroll down here and just below where we have our daily weather data, we'll say var, hourly weather data, 
colon, and then in brackets, that hourly weather struct that we just created equals open and close brackets because it's going to start out as an empty array. Now let's scroll down in our do loop where we've decoded our JSON into a value called result. And in a previous video, we created this for loop, which went through result.daily, then broke out and formatted every value we needed inside of the daily array so we could create an element of daily weather and append that to daily weather data. Well, let's highlight this entire for loop. So from for till this curly that you see I've highlighted here, copy it and then paste this right below that for loop. So just before the catch, and we'll use this as a template for what we need to do when we're working with our hourly array. So we'll start off right here in the beginning of the for loop. We want to go through result.hourly.count, not result.daily.count. Then in this first line here, we're going to convert a Unix date into a working Apple date. So first, let's change the name of this constant from weekday date to hourly date. The value we pass into the date initializer to the right of the equal sign will be result.hourly index dt, change daily to hourly. So option click on hourly. And yes, we did indeed change this to a valid Apple date. Good. But next up, we need to work with a date formatter. And specifically, this date formatter needs to format the date so that what we're getting back is just the hour in 12 hour format plus AM and PM. So instead of using the date formatter we have here, let's scroll up top and create a new one. But we can highlight the old date formatter, copy it, then paste it down below the old formatter, and we'll use this as a template to create a new formatter. So why don't we call this new formatter our formatter? I'll type that over the old name date formatter. Then I'll highlight and copy that, and I'll replace date formatter with our formatter on the first line, second line, and the return line. By the way, inside of the curlies here, I could have used any name for our constant, but I figured our formatter is probably a good one since that's going to pass a value back to this value that's named our formatter. Then the only other thing that I need to do is where I've got these four capital E's in here, just highlight that and put lowercase h, lowercase a, like ha, right in there. And the h and the a are the format code for the 12 hour time and the AM or PM. Now I know my date formatter, the way that I've set it up is working fine. It's only creating it once after the project run. So I'm just gonna highlight and delete the print statements here and in the date formatter above it. And I'll also head over to location detail view controller and remove the print statement in that date formatter too. Now back in weatherdetail.swift, let's scroll back down into our second for loop where we're going through all of the elements of result.hourly. And in this second line in here where we previously used the date formatter to decode the time zone, let's make sure that it's says our formatter dot time zone. That'll make sure that it uses the time zone for this location to get the appropriately formatted hour for that time zone. We don't need to change anything else on this line, but in the line below, we're going to be formatting to a string from hourly date. So for the from value, replace weekly date with hourly date. That's the valid Apple date we created up top from our old Unix date. Why don't we call this constant hour instead of daily weekday and make sure we're not using the old date formatter here, but it should be our new hour formatter. That's the one that's going to do the ha formatting. So there's a lot of steps there, but what we did was we took our Unix date and now we have a string, which is an hour and 12 hour format with AM or PM. Down below, to be consistent, we'll rename daily icon to hourly icon, but make sure that you're getting this not from results.daily, but results.hourly. We're not getting a summary, so we can delete that line. Now, we also don't have a high or a low temperature, but what I'll do is I'll highlight daily high, and I'll change that to hourly temperature. And in here, we don't have to go in one level and get a temperature inside of temp. Temp itself is our temperature with a decimal, so I'll delete the max dot in there. So we're just getting temp dot rounded, but we're getting this from the hourly array. So make sure that you highlight daily and replace that with hourly. Now Xcode would give us an error if we got anything wrong, but just to confirm, you could option click on top of hourly temperature. Yup, it's an int. I'm going to delete the daily low line below that. I don't need that, but I'll make a space so that I can create an instance of my hourly weather struct. And I'll do that with let lower camel case hourly weather equals upper camel case hourly weather open parens. We see our initializer in here for hour. I'll pass in hour for hourly temperature. I'll pass in hourly temperature and for hourly icon. I'll pass in hourly icon. Then I can delete the line down here where I created the daily weather. And below that, I'll append my value with self.hourlyweatherdata.append, passing in hourly weather. So now I can delete the comparable daily weather data line below that. Finally, my print statement, I'm going to print out in my double quotes, hour colon string and terp comma temperature colon string and terp comma icon colon string and terp, passing in the values hour, hourly temperature, and hourly icon. Then I can get rid of the old print statement below this, build and run and take a look at what we got. No errors, build succeeded, hammer time.
everything we're looking for in this video is going to show up on the console, so let's see. And I can scroll up and I can see for our bogus current location that's somewhere in Chad, we are getting hourly temperatures starting at 1 p.m. Cool. Or should I say hot, because it's about 100 degrees in Chad. I'm going to swipe over a bit. Let's take a look at things at Boston College. I'll scroll up and yep, these are definitely the results from Boston College. And let's see, the first hour there says 8 a.m. And my Mac clock says 8.39 a.m., so that's looking good. And as we scroll down, we can see the time change hour by hour. The temperature is changing. The icons are changing. This is all looking really good. Now, the one thing is we actually have more hours than I want in here. 24 hours of hour by hour forecast is good. Then we should just rely on the daily weather forecast. It's pretty easy to make that change. So why don't we do it now? I'll head back to my code inside of weatherdetail.swift. Just before I go through my loop for result.hourly here, I'll make a space, put in a comment that says get no more than 24 hours of data. Now, I've never seen Open Weather share anything less than 24 hours of forecast data, but just to make sure that we don't get an error if for some reason we get less than 24 hours, we'll say let last hour equals min, and as code completion says down here, min returns the lesser of two values that you pass in, so we'll say 24, comma, result.hourly.count. Most of the time we'll get more than 24 hours, so this will just report back 24. But if for some reason, let's imagine that open weather delivered only three hours of hourly data, then we would get three. And you know what? Since the first hour is actually the current hour, and that's kind of the same temperature, I'm going to get rid of the first hour. I'm not going to process that one because we're already showing the current temperature in the big temperature number at the top of our app. So I'm going to loop through result.hourly starting at one. But again, just to make sure that I don't get an index out of range error here in the unlikely event that I don't get any hourly weather data back, I'm just going to say if last hour is greater than zero, open and close curlies. Then I'm gonna grab this entire for loop, cut it out, then paste it between the curlies. And then for my range here, I wanna go from one dot dot less than last hour. And to make sure that I go through the full 24 hours in range, I'm actually gonna get rid of the less than and make this three dot so that it's a closed range. Then let's build and run, take a look at our results. Then in our current location, not current location, that's Chad, we start at 5 p.m. going all the way up to 4 p.m. in our weather forecast data. If I swipe a couple more times to go to Boston College, scroll back up to make sure that I'm looking at the hourly forecast for that, I can see that my first hourly forecast is 12 p.m., which is good because I haven't quite reached noon here on my computer's clock. And if I scroll down, I get a full day of forecast stopping at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Swifter, this is fantastic. We've got all our data. We're ready in the next video to put things in a horizontally scrolling collection view. Hope you're feeling good about your skills. Keep at it.